Good morning. Welcome to worship, especially if you're visiting today or joining online, and a particular welcome to those members and friends gathered together in our guy. Thank you to the choir and to Andrew um, for beginning worship, and to Andrew for playing for us again today while Roddy recuperates. Some notices to share with you. Um, there is tea and coffee at the end of the service. We'll hope you'll stay if you're able. Um, there are forms at the doors, we think. There was a hunt for the forms at the doors before, looking for volunteers to help with donations for the soup and sweet lunch next Sunday and for the rota to join friends at services in Boner Bridge in Argyle for help with welcoming visitors and offering tea and coffee throughout the Flower Festival. Um, tickets for the soup and sweet lunch are on sale after the service today and we hope that you'll um, pick up some of those. Um, the money, I think, is going to Christian Aid, if I remember correctly. Um, Natan knows just tomorrow, uh, Monday the 25th at 12.30 in the West Church Hall. There is an invitation to coffee and fellowship every Wednesday at 2.30 in Mark and Marion's home. The details are on the sheet. And then we are on the cusp of, of Holy Week today. We begin today. Um, and there is much happening this week. Um, if you pick up your newsletter, which is available today at the door um, for a pound, um, you'll see the list of everything that's going on in the next week or so. Um, there are services here um, every night, um, Monday to Friday. There is a walk of witness on Friday over in Ardguy to Boner. Um, on Saturday, there are events celebrating the 800th anniversary of the laying of the first stones of the cathedral. And then on Sunday morning, remember to put your clocks forward and then get up really early for the sunrise service. Um, or if you're like me, you'll go to the later one at Boner because it's not till half eight. And then um, there's a service here with the moderator of the Church of Scotland, Right Reverend Sally Foster Fulton um, preaching and bringing friends with her. And then the lunch after as well. Um, and a songs of praise in the evening, just in case you haven't had enough church. Um, lots of things happening, There's loads of things I haven't even said, but do just look at the back of the newsletter and you'll pick it all up there. Um, and very last thing, I have a note from Margaret, an invitation to a spring sing in Dingwall St. Clements on Tuesday the 16th of April at 1.30 p.m. So come along, come and sing. And I think those are all the notices. Let's keep silence for a moment. Here we stand, on the cusp of the week the church calls holy. Here we stand, on the edge of the city, no draw till now. Here we stand, on the side of the poor, palm branches waving. Here we stand, on the way of death and resurrection. And we need not be afraid. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you, our life, our love. Lord, meet us here, we pray, that the stories of these days find and unbind us, that truth settle deeply in our souls, drawing faithful following and honest praise. Lord Jesus, our life, our love, our hope, our home, may all glory and honour be yours. Amen. 
Our first hymn together this morning is number 364, a Pam Sunday hymn, All Glory, Laud and Honour. And Andrew tells me that many churches sing the chorus only at the beginning and at the end because of the number of verses. So that's what we're going to do today. We'll sing the chorus and then work our way through the verses and then return to the chorus to, to finish. Hymn 364. together in our prayers of thanks and unburdening, and we join together to say the Lord's Prayer, which is on the back of the service sheet, but to say it in whatever form is yours. Let's pray. Lord, God of the palms, gladly we add our voices to the chorus of blessings, for we too long for liberation. We too long for the world to be different, for us to be different in it. Lord, we too ache to know the freedom from fear you long for us all. Do not be afraid, it is written. Do not be afraid, son, daughter of mine, Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Lord, God of the promise, accept our praise, we pray. The jump up and down thank yous, the breathless cries, 
the wide-eyed wonder, the deeper than words sighs. Lord, God of the way, receive our blessing. And Lord, make a blessing of us. Make of our lives a song of peace, a cry for justice. Even as we pray as Jesus taught his friends and bids us live, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just before we come to John's telling of the first Palm Sunday and to a psalm which seems to foretell this day, did you know there were likely two processions? heading for the city that spring day. There's one we think we know, a saviour on a young donkey, pilgrims waving branches, a ragtag band of disciples, those found, those freed, those healed, those hearing a different story about themselves. Over on the other side of the city, another procession is forming. It's Passover, the most holy week of the Jewish year, and the population of the city is swelling to something like five times its size. As many as 200,000 people may be there celebrating liberation from an earlier empire. Cue a military procession with Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, at its head, a column of cavalry and soldiers, a demonstration of imperial power meant to remind its subjects what will happen should talk turn to liberation today. These two processions, in many ways, embody the conflict that will come in days approaching. Pilate's procession is a physical expression of the power and glory and violence of empire, of a system of rule by the few to the economic and physical detriment of the many. Jesus' procession is declaration of another vision, the kingdom of God, its inhabitants not so much subjects as children of God, who are to love the world as God loves, and the few who would lord it over the many called to a life of justice and joy. Maybe, as we watch for Jesus' procession, we need to be listening also for the footsteps of soldiers on the other side of the city. And maybe we need to ask ourselves if we as individuals, as a nation, as a church, are in the procession we're meant for. Let's sing together again hymn 356, Meekness and Majesty, hymn 356.
I hope everybody can hear me this morning. Just checking, thank you. The passage today is from John chapter 12, and it's on page 135 of the New Testament section of the Pew Bible. It's the story of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king, riding on a young donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time. But when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him and that they had done this for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm now going to read Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2, and 19 to 29. And you've got a little bit underneath, it's marked with a cross, and where that cross comes in down the psalm, I invite you to join in and say those two lines with us. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Whoever is righteous may enter. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna. Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
Thank you, Debbie. We go on worshipping together in our prayers for comfort and reassurance. Let us pray. Lord, we know this story, its twists and turns, one day shouting blessings, another calling murder, one day waving branches, another standing at the cross. How quickly a crowd can turn, how fickle human hearts can be. We know, we see it in ourselves, Lord, one day at ease, the next day doubting, one day at peace with those around us, the next day raging. God of grace, cover us with your love, we pray. Steady us with sure knowledge of its fullness. Lord, save us from endless, exhausting vacillations between forgiveness and resentment. And help us, whether in the heat of the moment or the cold light of day, to choose love and let it become us. Lord, there are many disappointed today who turn to violence and many more who lose their lives because of it. And so we find ourselves praying in bewilderment for Moscow, where a concert became a massacre. For Ukraine, so many people without heat and power and water plunged into darkness. For Gaza, children dying from hunger, aides sitting in trucks on the wrong side of the border, unable to get in. Lord, what can we do? What can we pray but that we find ways to challenge hatred and injustice and all that destroys our common humanity? Lord, we pray for others known to us and to you, living with sadness and disappointment, perhaps because they've received stressing news about themselves or someone they care for, or because the relationship they thought secure feels fragile suddenly, or because they just can't seem to get out of the bit can't seem to catch the hand that would surely pull them up. We think of them now, Lord. And we thank you for your care for them. What can we do? What can we pray? But that we be a gentle presence a sign of your transforming love, that lost smiles be found and peace become us all through Jesus Christ, who loved as we must to the very end. In his name, amen. We invite you to sing again. Hymn 528, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Hymn 528. Thank you. 
Whenever we get to this time of year, the remembered words of a hospital chaplain come to my mind, remarking how patients would so often say to her, I'm glad I didn't know what was in front of me, meaning perhaps they're glad they didn't know how hard the struggle for wellness would be. She went on to reflect, but Jesus, as he entered the city, knew precisely what was ahead of him. Those who put themselves on a collision course with systems of oppression know they're placing themselves in danger from that self-same system. We might think perhaps of Martin Luther King, who lived to end the evils of racism, and on how on the night before he was assassinated, he said, I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. He knew. He knew fighting the system could get him killed, and it did. Or thought could turn to the less well-known black South African men who challenged apartheid laws which demanded they carry a pass card a law which said anyone without a pass card could be arrested. On the March the 21st, 1960, black South African men had plans to leave their pass cards at home, go to the police station, and ask to be arrested in an act of civil disobedience. While the men began their walk to the police station, officers opened fire, killing 69 and injuring hundreds in what is remembered now as the Sharpville Massacre. Did they know too? These sons and brothers and fathers, did they know they were in danger of walking right to their deaths? Or we might think of Victor Hara, a farmer's son arrested by the Chilean military during a coup. The charge, Victor sang songs of love and peace and social justice. Or as a song about him puts it, he grew up to be a fighter against the people's wrongs. He listened to their griefs and joys and turned them into songs. His hands were gentle, his hands were strong. Hara was thrown into a stadium, one of 5,000 men held prisoner And when he sang for his fellow prisoners, perhaps to comfort them, perhaps to remind them of the importance of holding on to what is true, the importance of holding on to their humanity, even there, the guards cut short his song for good. Surely he knew. Surely he knew where the guard's gun would be pointing. And still he sang. And by all accounts, Jesus knew too. According to John's Gospel, the last time he was in the city 
that was at a festival time too. He only just escaped being killed. And in the chapter before this one, he is a wanted man. There is even a plot to kill his friend Lazarus, whom he raised from death. Lazarus is walking witness to Jesus' power over the grave, a witness to who Jesus is. And those who feel their followers becoming fewer, who feel their power threatened, want rid of them both. According to John's Gospel, Jesus was not a frequent visitor to any city, never mind Jerusalem. Though he lived in close proximity to one, he spent most of his time in towns and villages and in the countryside between. Some argue that this is because the cities were where the stronghold of the wealthy was. Those who colluded with the Roman occupiers for their own gain, who acted on behalf of Rome, the temple and its authorities included. The towns and villages were where most people lived and worked, where people did their best to get by with what they had. Here Jesus wandered, telling stories. Here he invited himself to houses no one else wanted to visit. Here he spent time with those others overlooked or heads down hurried past. Here he ate and drank and laughed and wept and taught. Here he held and freed people, releasing them from pain and death and sorrow. Here he sought the rest and refuge of friends. Here, it could be said, Jesus aligned himself most firmly with those made subjects, those made poor. And when he rode into Jerusalem on that young donkey, a great crowd come to welcome him. He was setting himself in opposition to the system that made them so. Observing these things, the religious leaders are all but nailing his coffin. They remark to themselves, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. These words remind me of a saying of Abba Anthony, a third century desert father. Anthony said, a time is coming when people will go mad. And when they see someone who is not mad, they will attack him saying, you are mad, you are not like us. And so they did, so they do. All of this makes me ask questions this morning about what we're doing here. All of this makes me ask questions about what we are doing together to bring that alternative vision that is the kingdom of God, where those considered unimportant are given the most important place, where those who suffer injustice are freed to fullness of life. If this was so important to Jesus, he was willing to risk torture and execution, shouldn't it be all we talk about, all we work for, all we are? There is miracle, writes Cole Arthur Riley, in belonging to a God who rejects the image of a glorified hero and instead comes to us on a donkey, entering the plight of those who suffer Liberation begins with this. Do not be afraid. Liberation is coming. That rival procession on the city's edge. Liberation is coming. I am with those who suffer. Liberation is coming. I will suffer too. Liberation is coming. Do not be afraid, son, daughter of mine. Look, your king is coming. Amen.
And now we gather together our offering, and as it's brought forward, we sing the first verse of hymn 502. Let us pray. God who liberates, as we walk your way, as we enter this holy week, we give ourselves to you, praying, save us from fear, praying that what is important to you be important to us too. Praying we find ways to be with those who suffer, to help you bring about the freedom you desire for us all. Lord God of blessing in all things, keep us close to you, that your heart be our heart, your eyes, be our eyes and there be nothing but love never ending between us. Amen. It's just a reminder that there is tea and coffee after the service if you're able to stay. Also a note about a gift. You're invited to pick up a stone um, gathered and decorated by members of the women's group. They'll be at the, the doors as you leave today. In another telling of the Palm Sunday story, Jesus' followers are criticized for praising him in the street. And Jesus says in response, he looks at the ground, at the stones, and he said, if they were quiet, these stones would sing in praise. So please take a stone with you, put it in your pocket or somewhere where you'll see it often, and let it be a reminder that the final word this week is not crucify, but alleluia. Let's close our worship by singing together hymn 365, Ride on, ride on in majesty, 365.
Whatever call you have felt here, take it. It is yours to live into. Whatever love you have felt here, take it. It is yours to share. The blessing of God, source, saviour, spirit is with you for now and for always.